Mmm, raspberry pie. It's phenomenal. It's tasty. It's yummy. It's Linuxy goodness. This here is Ubuntu uh, Mate or Mate, whatever you want to call it. Uh, running on the Raspberry Pi 4. And this was the OS that I chose so that I could do a full review of the Raspberry Pi uh, for 8 gigabyte. This is, this is my OS of choice and we'll talk about why I went with it over Raspbian and what the pros and cons are. So stay tuned for this video here. Let's talk about the Raspberry Pi uh, 4 8 gig as a desktop replacement. That's why you're here. Um, so as you see in the intro, I went with Ubuntu Mate or Mate over Raspbian. Uh, the reason for that is because I feel like Ubuntu uh, is faster, really. Um, the GUI, I like the, you know, the, the GUI better, the graphical user interface. I like it better than what I do Raspbian. Um, I feel like the GUI is faster overall um, compared to Raspbian. So, I mean, that could just be a feel thing. It could be a preference thing, um, but it does feel faster. Um, and I felt like it did have more features. Um, as you'll see, you know, going to YouTube and stuff, watching the video on Ubuntu Mate uh, using Chromium is a lot easier than what it is on Raspbian. Uh, with Raspbian, trying to go to YouTube, uh, watch something or, uh, you know, watch a video or anything like that, uh, it didn't do so well whenever you're trying to watch a video. Also with Ubuntu Mate, you can use Firefox, which is really cool. Um, it works really well. I'm not saying that it doesn't work on Raspbian, but it does work really well on Ubuntu. Um, so as you can see, like I said with the video, it went full screen, didn't really have any trouble. It's not the fastest thing in the world as far as doing 1080p by 60. Um, it doesn't look too bad though, uh, you know. And then there's also included extras of using Ubuntu, like you get the LibreOffice suite, so you know you can work on Word documents or you can do Excel spreadsheets, things of that nature. And you also get the other things with Linux, such as a terminal. Um, <clears throat> you, know, you can install uh, you know, your IDEs that you want to use. Um, you, know, you can still set it up and do anything you can on Ubuntu server, really. Because that's all it is, it's just a graphical user interface or a GUI over top of Ubuntu server. And so to get Ubuntu Mate, it's really simple. Um, you just go to the Ubuntu Mate downloads, you go to Raspberry Pi, you pick the newest one, which is uh, version 20 or 20, and it's the 20 LTS. Choose it, um, they've got a guide on how to put it. So really all you do is you just download it, use Bolina Etcher um, or Etcher to flash it to your SD card, put it inside of your Raspberry Pi, go through the installation process and you are good to go. It's really super simple to do. And it's, you know, it's, it's one of the great things about the Raspberry Pi is it's really great to try out different operating systems. Um, so maybe if you don't like Raspbian, you can try Ubuntu Mate or you can try Kali or, or some other form. You can even do Windows on Raspberry Pi as well. And so I tried to do some work on this machine just to see how it would do. Um, a couple years ago when the Raspberry Pi 3 came out, I made a bet with a coworker that I could use Raspberry Pi 3 to do my job throughout the entire day. Um, it did not happen. The Raspberry Pi 4 is faster. And so I use the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, you know, I, I do things like email, conference calls, and developing things of that nature. And so um, <clears throat> when you use something like G Suite, which is what we use, very easy to check your email. It's, you can download Chromium on here. Uh, you can sync your account, and so you'll have everything across the G Suite um, to sync. So you got your calendar, your email, all that stuff. Um, and of course, you've got your documents that you can use in the cloud. So like Google Sheets, Google Docs, uh, slides, whatever. You got all that stuff that you can use, so you can get a lot of work done that way. Um, I'm a developer. Well, I'm not a developer. I'm a, a, a director of IT, so I do help with development some whenever my guys get stuck. And so. You know, I can put IDEs on here. You can put like IntelliJ or um, <clears throat> Visual Studio Code, which is what we use. So you can actually put it on here, no problem, um, and use it. So you can do development work that way. Uh, I even tried out Google Meets. Uh, using Google Meets, it worked really well, actually. I had no trouble using Google Meets. I've obviously, um, I can't show you footage of me being on a, a call with coworkers. 
um, or I would. However, it, it does work really well. One of the things that I enjoyed over Ubuntu um, versus Raspbian was I could not get my Alienware headset to work with Raspbian. It, it just would not work. It takes you, um, the dongle, uh, USB dongle. Um, it just wouldn't work, and I couldn't get the analog audio, so just plug in headphones into the uh, analog port to work either using Raspbian. However, with Ubuntu, I was able to get the Alienware headset working just fine, both the, the speakers and the mic, no problem, and I was able to get analog headphones. I tried like a pair of the HyperX clouds or something um, with it to see if I could get sound through it that way, no problem, and so um, <clears throat> that was a lot better than Raspbian. One of the things though that you miss out on is you can't do raspy config inside of Ubuntu. That's a, a Raspbian specific thing. Um, so you can't go in and type sudo raspy config and go in and do Raspberry Pi configurations, which is a shame. Um, you can't, it's more difficult to get a, a real VNC working so that you can remote into it. You can of course SSH into it. However, it's a lot more uh, difficult to get VNC working, which is something that I like to use with my Raspberry Pi, so I can just be at my desktop, I can you know remote into it and do stuff on it that way and not have to worry about taking up another monitor and having another mouse, keyboard, etc. Um, so after spending quite a bit of time to try and get that working, it really didn't work, which is fine. There's guides out there. I just didn't have enough time to go about it and keep on doing it. Um, <clears throat> but you can get it to work. So that's one of the things that's you know, I miss about Raspbian is, you know, Raspbian, you can go in, you can set up VNC super quick. It takes like just a couple minutes, boom, you're ready to go and you can remote into it and do stuff all day long with it and never have to take up another monitor. So all in all, um, this will be the conclusion. So all in all, using the Raspberry Pi as a day-to-day -day desktop replacement, if your workload is not very intensive so let's say you know, you're just checking email or maybe writing documents you could actually do it um you're going to want to get a faster sd card because that's what really going to speed up your system a little bit um <clears throat> it is a i mean it's not super fast it's like you know it's not like you're riding around on an i3 or something um but nothing i3 is super fast but it's you know much faster than this um but you know, you can actually get work done. You can, uh, like I said, faster SD card is going to help out a lot. Um, you know, making sure that you're not overloading it with tabs. Having the eight gigs helps a lot over the four gigs. Um, you can also overclock your ARM processor if you wanted to. There, got, there is guides on how to do that. Um, so you could theoretically use this as a desktop replacement, or you can set it up for your kids. Um, which would be a really great thing to do. You can set this up, you can do parental controls and stuff, you know, you'll have to Google how to do it. Um, you know, set up DNS and stuff on your router using like OpenDNS or McAfee Family Safe or something like that. Um, and you can set this up for your kids and they can go in, you can play games on it, they can do, uh, if they wanted to learn development or something like that. That's really um, what this thing's about. It's not a full desktop replacement, however, if you wanted to learn how to develop, it's a great development platform uh, that you can use, that you can set up. It's got the power behind it to where you can learn how to develop. You don't have to worry about messing with anything on your main system and you're not out a whole lot of cost. If you've got an extra keyboard and mouse and monitor laying around, um, you know, you can pick one of these up for $100 and you can learn a new skill, uh, a very helpful skill that will hopefully um, lead to better opportunities for you. And that's where this really shines, as well as having something for your kids to play on. So you don't have to go out and buy, you know, a $600 laptop or anything. You can buy a $100 Raspberry Pi and they've got something that they can work on. Um, and, or if you're just wanting something at your house and you don't want to go out and spend a lot of money, then you can use a Raspberry Pi like this, put up Ubuntu made on it. And if the only thing you do is check your email, browse the internet, then you're golden. And it's, really a cost saving thing. I mean, you can save a lot of money by picking this up. And that's, those are the three scenarios where this really shines. It's not, I mean, you can use it. It just depends, right? Uh, it's all about the tools that you need. You know, you don't use a hammer to unscrew a screw, right? 
you don't use a screwdriver to nail in a nail. And so once you get down to what it is, the right tool for the job, then you can make an informed purchase decision. As always, everything is linked below of what you need. Um, I'll link like the Ubuntu guide. I will link all the parts used in this video. If you don't care, go ahead and leave a, a comment and let me know what you think about this video. Uh, if you're using a Raspberry Pi, leave a like if you want to. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Um, we will be uh, hopefully hitting 1,000 subscribers before December. Also, new announcement, um, World of Warcraft Shadowlands has finally gotten a release date and we will be streaming that on the channel here. Um, so if you've got friends and stuff who want to uh, watch it, go ahead and we'll be streaming uh, Shadowlands starting, I guess it'll be Tuesday morning. When, as soon as it launches, we're going to start streaming and we're probably going to look at giving away a couple codes for it. Um, so we might have some giveaways. So tell your friends and I'll see you there.